Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? My name is Adam Moose, and today we're going to be starting a new series. This series is going to be called In Depth. Today's video is going to be an in depth guide on Graves Jungle. In the In Depth series, we're going to be going over runes, items, abilities, pathing, strategy, matchups, when they're strong, when they're weak, and some final tips and tricks on just how to be a better Graves Jungle player. If you do enjoy this video, it would really, really help me out if you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, these videos take a lot of effort, and I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Alright, so first things first, let's talk about runes. Phase Rush is pretty much undeniably the best rune choice for Graves. One of his main weaknesses is that when he's not able to get in range of his targets, he can't really do anything. We'll cover that more in detail later, but Phase Rush is by far the best choice for Graves. This is the standard sorcery rune page. For the first choice, Nimbus Cloak is by far the best option. In my opinion, this rune in general is just too strong on junglers. It lets you get in range of targets. It lets you choose Red Smite so you can not only get the movement speed, but also duel much more effectively. I could talk about the benefits of this rune for hours, but I'll spare you on that. You get the point. Nimbus Cloak. Basically, if you're not going Nimbus Cloak, you're trolling. Absolute Focus for the second rune is also kind of a no-brainer. It provides Graves with a ton of damage in scenarios where you're either setting up a trap in a bush, or you're even just dashing in at full HP to burst a target. The extra adaptive damage is just ideal on Graves. Some people do go Celerity, but I don't really recommend it. I think Absolute Focus is just better. The last best option is Water Walking. This rune is just good for champions who want to duel over Scuttles, Dragons, and Heralds. The movement speed plus damage it provides is honestly just perfect for what Graves wants to do. You see the enemy jungler in the river? If you don't have Water Walking, you're losing out, basically. It also is just good to go from lane to lane, so that's another benefit with the movement speed. Now let's talk about secondary. Precision is the tree used by most players in ranks, masters, and below. Pretty much everyone takes Triumph plus either Legend Alacrity or Tenacity, so something like this. Alacrity is all around good on Graves to give him passive attack speed. Tenacity is good situationally when the enemy team has a ton of CC. For my personal favorite secondary, it's actually Inspiration. In my opinion, magical, magical footwear or magical boots are just overpowered. Giving you boots for free that are actually better than the normal boots allows you to put all your money into damage. I also take Cosmic Insight to give me some passive CDR, which just improves clear speed with lower cooldowns, and it also does scale very well since you can go to 45% CDR. Tarzan, the rank 1 infamous Graves player, uses this setup and I got it from him. For these runes, um, I always do this setup. You could also go HP or magic resist for the last one, but attack speed, attack speed adaptive force, and usually armor is what I run. Now let's talk about item choices. Graves is a bit complicated in the item department. He can almost use literally every AD and attack speed item in the game. Besides Warrior and Red Smite, which are staples, he can use almost anything. Since he's so flexible, I decided to break it down into multiple sections. Let's start with his standard build, which is a bit more tanky with some frontline potential. With this build, I almost always go Black Lever second, which provides some very needed CDR and armor shred. Phantom Dancer is a really good choice for a second or third item as well, since it gives attack speed and also a shield to prevent you from getting bursted. RFC is another good option to output more damage from range if you don't think you need the shield. From this point, you can add in situational items from the list I'll show shortly. Secondly, let's talk about Lethality Graves. I've been adding in a Lethality item after Warrior if I get a lead if I'm against a really squishy team comp. Umbral Glaive is an insanely efficient choice as it only costs 2400 gold and it also gives you a passive ward clear. Edge of Night is a really good choice versus champs like Zoe, Nidalee, Blitzcrank, just as some examples. And Ghostblade is also really good if you just feel like you need some movement speed. For boots, 
I pretty much always go Mercs if I'm against a bunch of CC and Ninja Tabbies if they have a lot of AD or auto attack based champions. I would say probably 90% of the time I'd go those items. Berserker Greaves are really good if you are the only damage dealer on your team, but I would really recommend the other two in most situations. Now for the situational items. There are a ton of them, so I'll go over each one fast. Mav Mamorcius is just really good versus heavy burst AP comps. GA if you want some armor and need to win some crucial team fights. Death's Dance did get nerfed, but it still has good sustain versus tankier comps and anti burst. Um, Mortal Reminder versus heavy healing. QSF, QSS if you need to dodge a key CC. And finally, IE and Storm Razor if you just want to put out a ton of damage and try and 1v9. Now let's talk pathing. I usually have three paths in mind when I'm playing Graves Jungle. The first path that I'll talk about is the three camp gank path. This path consists of taking your two buffs plus gromp and then ganking. I like to do this path when I have a lane with a lot of setup. For example, a Shen top, Blitzcrank bot, TF mid, etc. It also depends on the enemy champs. The easier ganks you have, the better this gank path is. A very important thing to note about this path is that you want to start on the opposite side of where you want to gank to be as efficient as possible. If you do not have gankable lanes, this path is frowned upon since ganking and getting nothing out of it will just put you behind since you're not farming. You could also do this to counter gank if you think the enemy will be doing a level 3 gank as well. Secondly, there's the invade path. Since this style depends on a lot of factors, I'll just discuss some general ideas. I like to early invade when I'm versus a weak early game jungler who is not able to win a 1 vs 1 fight versus me. Since Graves is extremely strong level 2, this can work versus a lot of junglers such as Elise, Zac, Rek'Sai, etc. These champs are extremely dependent on being level 3, so if you invade level 2, you'll have a big advantage. The goal of this path is to grab your red buff and push the enemy jungler off one of their buffs to end up with 3 buffs. This will give you an early game advantage that you can use to keep track of the enemy jungler and get a level slash gold lead on them. Be aware, if you have weak early laners such as Cassidy, since they won't be able to help you out if a fight breaks out. Don't range at your teammates if they're playing weak early game champs and you decide to invade. Lastly, there's a full clear route, which is pretty self-explanatory. You will clear all of your camps to hit level 4 and then go for one scuttle. The goal of this clear is to have a safe early game and clear as fast as possible. Graves is a very good clearing jungler and this path is effective if you want to avoid fights. I usually stick to the other paths as I like to be aggressive in the early game to track the enemy jungler, but in some scenarios this could also work. An example of this would be if you had a Kale top and Cassidy mid. This is an extreme example, but with these champs on your team you want to avoid getting into a fight as much as possible and scale up. Finally, let's talk about Graves' strengths and weaknesses. Graves' biggest weakness is his range. This is one of the biggest reasons why he was not in the meta before Phase Rush Graves was a thing. Graves struggles into team comps with a ton of long range and CC. Champs like Caitlyn just stop Graves in his tracks before he could even output any damage. Ways to counter this is to set up traps in bushes or out of vision. Another weakness is that Graves has no CC. This can lead to some problems getting targets locked down such as Nidalee. Graves does also struggle into some tank matchups such as Ramis, since they can just tank up his damage and lock him down. Now let's talk strengths. Graves is an S tier jungler for a reason. With recent XP changes in the jungle, Graves is one of the best power farmers in the game. A Graves left alone farming his jungle camps is a scary sight. You can farm up a storm and come out 2 to 4 levels up on your enemy jungler if you farm and counter jungle efficiently. Another big upside to Graves is his versatility. As I mentioned earlier, he could build almost any item to fit the situation. A smart Graves player can change his build to best suit the specific game. Graves with the right items is able to hard carry a game, which is why he's such a good solo queue pick to climb. The last thing I'll mention for Graves' upside is his effectiveness at all points in the game. Graves is a strong duelist from level 1 on. He's a strong early game fighter and scales well into the mid and late game if picked in the right team comp. To close out the video, I'll give my final thoughts. Although Graves does not have any fancy mechanics, I think he has a very high skill ceiling because of how many playstyles he has. Some games you need to play for a snowball, or some you want to scale. Knowing what playstyle suits which game is a factor that differentiates a decent Graves player from a great one. 
There is also a new Graves tech that I'll address, which is Ignite Smite Graves. This actually seems pretty strong, although I don't have enough experience with it to be too confident in my opinion on it. It could definitely be good in certain matchups as it allows you to beat the enemy jungler at every point in the game. That will do it for my in-depth analysis on Graves Jungle. If you stay to the end and have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm not the greatest Graves player in the universe, so I'm sure that you guys also have some good information that could help out other players. If you did enjoy, it really helps me out if you could leave a like on the video and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my posts. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.